So GMG is finally stepping into the gas blowback rifle game and they're coming in hot with quite a few unique features and a unique aesthetic. I've always liked GNG's innovation mindset, which might not always pan out, but is always fun to check out. I'm happy to report this gun is a lot of fun to shoot with a very strong blowback and excellent handling characteristics. However, there are a few quirks you should know about. Let's get started. Standard G&G box, this one has bright yellow and orange to denote that this one's a little bit special. A holographic sticker tells you the exact model, this variant has the 10 inch rail. Like many other companies, printed instructions are sadly being phased out by QR codes and scanning this one takes you directly to a PDF copy. I mean, I get the idea, but I'd rather the printed catalog be a QR code instead. At least there's a full exploded parts diagram which is always welcome, especially for gas guns. Included is one of G&G's pistol mag size speed loaders and this is actually one of the best of its type we've seen on the market with a really smooth action and solid build. You get a little plastic adapter which helps load the magazine though it is possible without it. A small detail but I'm glad they put their logo so you don't mix them up with other ones you might have. A steel quick release sling mount which is always nice to see included and an allen key to adjust the hop up which we'll get to in a moment. Let's take a look at the magazine, which of course for a gas gun is pretty important. It's got more of a modern design with flat face sides other than the raised finger ridges. Full metal construction, but relatively lightweight as far as gas mags go. It uses G&G's green rubber seen in their hop-up buckings as a gasket, and in our experience, it's a great compound that's really durable. Like other gas mags, it has a follower mechanism that allows you to dry fire, and I like that it requires quite a bit of force to engage, and I can't imagine it coming on accidentally. Feed lips are relatively low profile, which makes them less likely to snag and break off, but if they do, a few screws and you can easily swap them out if need be. It's a multi-piece body held together by both pins and screws, which potentially might be prone to leaks, but through our testing, held gas just fine. Taking a look at the rifle itself, it's definitely a modern look with no shortage of angular cuts. Not to everyone's taste, I'm sure, but certainly in line with current trends and more importantly fits right in in G&G's lineup. Paint and machining finish is excellent throughout the gun and overall is a very sharp looking rifle. I'm hoping they release more classic styled variants in the future, but for now, I think it's a fitting look for an all new release. Metal muzzle brake up front over a standard 14mm counterclockwise thread. I like the clean look without being overly aggressive, though interestingly the grub screw is on its side, not the bottom as most flash hiders. Metal mock gas block looks pretty good too. The 10 inch metal M lock rail is a very classic G&G feel with a similar matte texture seen on their other rifles. 5 M lock slots on the sides and the bottom and sort of a design cut on those 45 degree faces, though I wish it was M lock all around. The Picatinny up top has all the faces milled out, presumably for weight savings, and it only slightly triggers my trypophobia. I'm glad to see the rails line up with the receiver both in height and in slots, so bridging an optic mount should be painless. Overall feel is really comfortable even without anything else on, there's just no sharp edges to catch. Iron sights are standard G&G which I've always thought were really well built with a nice notch into place and adjustments that also have a nice clicky feeling as well. Looking at controls, check out how massive this bolt release is. Less ping pong paddle, more tennis racket. I'm sure it does make it a bit easier for your finger to find, but I'm more concerned with it potentially snagging your vest and breaking off, but still, it works well. ka -ching. The Ambi Mag release has a pivoting design with the button further down than most. Easy to hit with your left hand trigger finger and also easy to hit with your thumb of your off hand with a shape that's perfect for sliding your thumb down with the magazine. However, for the lefties, it's pretty much exactly where your finger rests off the trigger, potentially causing accidental drops. It might also cause your finger to slip under, depending on how you hold the gun. The oversized control theme continues to the other side with a giant paddle for the right hand, and it is indeed nearly impossible to accidentally miss. I like that there is a raised ridge, making the release a bit inset, which should be harder to accidentally hit. Still though, I'm not entirely sold on huge oversized controls, but I will say the grip texture and overall action feels really good. 
Magazine insert feels really nice as well, locking solidly into place. Zero movement up and down and only a bit of movement forward and back and side to side. Magazine drops free as well. Really nice work on how the magazine feels to insert and it's every bit as good if not better than other GBBRs. Selector switch has very nice notches, which GNG tends to be pretty good at, and it's equally nice on either side. It's a 45 degree design with full auto where semi normally would be. Theoretically, it's quicker to go into semi and even more so full auto versus a full 180 degree throw, but in airsoft, where semi auto is usually the norm, I'm not sure this was the best call. Most guys have built the muscle memory of flicking down expecting semi-auto, and for me, it definitely took a bit of adjustment not to go into full auto. Charging handle is an ambi design as well, with a lever to release the lock, regardless of which side is pulled. It functions really well, which is of course pretty important on a gas gun more so than an AEG. Racking that bolt, I really appreciate how smooth the travel is out of the box. Let's be real, one big reason people buy gas guns is the fidget aspect, and man, I gotta say, this gun has a great sound and feel for those who appreciate a good tactile response. One pretty unique feature is an actual functioning forward assist. If the bolt is a little bit out of battery, pushing the forward assist really does push the bolt forward, though there is a spring buffer so it does bounce back a bit. It's definitely more of a novelty anyways, but I don't know, it's pretty cool to me. Taking a look at the trigger, it's got very minimal take up before the wall. Brake is light and crisp, and there is a small amount of over travel after the brake. Reset is back near the beginning of travel, but the entire trigger travel is so small it's still not a far reset at all. More importantly, the reset does feel really tactile, and smooth double taps should be a breeze. Trigger guard is machined into the lower, and I'm glad to see a generous amount of room for glove fingers. The grip is sort of similar to the MCX style design with a thinner profile and more upright angle. Comfortable, but a touch small for my liking. Since there's no motor inside the grip, you can stash something small inside, like the Allen key for your hop-up. The stock we've seen from G&G before with two ways to adjust length and a noticeable, though not detrimental, amount of play on the buffer tube. I would have liked to see a way to further lock in the position a little tighter, like some of their other designs. As mentioned before, the hop-up is adjusted through the front with an Allen key through the barrel. This does mean that certain flash hiders will have to be removed and definitely make sure the gun is safe. There are nice clicks into each hop-up setting, though there is no easy reference point. To field strip the gun, make sure it's empty with no magazine, push the pin and pull it all the way out. Then the upper splits from the lower. Internals look to be constructed well with some steel and some aluminum parts, but otherwise fully metal inside. Releasing the captive buffer spring, you can see this massive steel buffer. It's definitely heavier than most, and combined with quite a stiff spring, likely contributes to the very nice feeling blowback. Pulling out the bolt assembly, you can look all the way down the barrel and hop up assembly. You'll notice this spring-loaded metal rod that works as sort of a buffer to prevent the nozzle slamming into the hop-up unit. It's actually quite clever because it allows for more reciprocating mass, i.e. more blowback force, without imparting all that force into the plastic nozzle up front. Pulling out the nozzle, travel is extremely smooth without being loose. I like the double piston system, which hopefully improves efficiency. The nozzle itself is polymer, and I'm glad to see the part that pushes the BB into the chamber is as reinforced as possible, as this is a high wear part. Let's hope GNG makes these nozzles easy to source, but to their credit, we didn't have a single misfeed. Sliding the bolt assembly back in and closing up the gun, be careful that the bolt is pushed forward and out of the way. Everything buttons up nicely without issue. Onto the range now and loading up the magazine, the loader adapter works really well, however, tilting the loader vertically helps speed the BBs much better. The gas inlet is recessed and tilted compared to the base plate, so with a shorter gas nozzle, lining it up without leaking gas can be a little difficult. Just be careful and find that sweet spot and it'll fill up just fine. Dropping that bolt just feels good, and putting some rounds down range, I'm really impressed with the overall shooting feel. Double taps and even triple taps are excellent, easily rivaling a pretty nice gas pistol. Here you can see just how strong the blowback is. I'm actually shouldering the gun, but it's still bucking a fair amount. It's not an exaggeration to say it rivals, if not exceeds, 
22LR levels of gun shaking fun. If you don't properly manage recoil, it will actually throw off your shots, which to me is just how shooting should be. Speaking of accuracy, we only have a short range here, but this tiny little hanger is still no joke, but it manages to land hits fairly consistently. I'm just using the iron sights here, but accuracy is definitely no slouch. The kick does force you to slow things down a little bit, and I think that might be exactly what some shooters are looking for. Gas efficiency is excellent, and this is actually the fourth magazine of BBs on one fill of gas, and it still manages to lock back on empty, though the kick is noticeably weaker. It's safe to say one to two mags should be no problem. Velocity isn't quite to the consistency as a nice AEG with a few FPS spikes, but overall it settles into a nice deviance. Wrapping things up, I really think G&G knocked it out of the park with this new GBBR. I certainly have my small gripes, but they tend to be more subjective than objective, and objectively, this gun feels proper good to shoot. Certainly a step up from older GBBR designs, and in my opinion, provided long-term durability is good, can easily hang with the best. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and I'll catch you on the next one.